Hi, uh, this is Ryan. I wanted to make a uh, video blog about Lady Gaga's new single, Do What You Want. Um, I'm a huge Lady Gaga fan. I was really surprised actually to see just how much I'm getting into uh, this new era of her career. I knew that I'd enjoy it, but I didn't know that I would enjoy it quite to the lengths that I have. Uh, but in, in typical Lady Gaga fashion, she is bringing it 110%, 1000%. This album is blowing me away with how she's promoting it. I, I love the concept and there's so many layers of stuff to unravel, which is the whole reason that I love Lady Gaga to begin with, is that nothing is quite what it seems on the surface. And that's why uh, I was compelled to um, make a video about her new single, Do What You Want. Which, uh, for a little backstory, today is October 23rd, 2013, and um, yesterday, uh, Do What You Want was announced as the official second single from the Art Pop album, which was not uh, the intention at all. It was supposed to be a song called Venus, but uh, they released Do What You Want early, and the response worldwide was uh, too overwhelmingly positive to ignore. So they moved the, the, the song into the official second single slot, which is pretty cool. I love to see when um, music connects to people on such a level that, you know, plans go out the door and you really just have to, to follow it. Um, a lot more to say on that maybe for a different video blog, because today I want to focus on the Michael Jackson connection to Do What You Want, uh, which you know, uh, there's several elements of the song that directly tie to uh, MJ, God rest his soul. Uh, huge MJ fan here too, not surprisingly. Um, but uh, I was listening to, to Do What You Want Today and uh, reading the lyrics. And I don't know about anyone else, but in the opening verse of the song, I kind of have a hard time understanding what uh, Lady Gaga is saying. I kind of think that's by design sometimes with her. I think she wants you to know what she says, but not necessarily put it right in your face immediately. So listen to the song loads of times, but never quite understood exactly what she said. So today I realized that um, in the first verse uh, she's talking about, you know, she she um, she walks alone, she, she trips herself up, she falls, she gets back up, she's doing good. And then, you know, the media, the haters come along and you print some shit that makes me wanna scream. And that right there, as fans, is our clue into the fact that Do What You Want is uh, definitely supposed to have some Michael Jackson uh, undertones to it. Why is that? Because uh, if you're an MJ fan, those lyrics will immediately resonate with you um, because they're lifted straight from Michael Jackson's uh, song that was his answer to the haters in the media called Scream which he says throughout the song in a variety of ways, but in the chorus, the predominant way, is stop pressuring me, you make me want to scream. So as soon as I heard that, I'm, I'm like, wow. There's definitely some Michael Jackson uh, undertones going on here. You know, listening to the song further, there's so much more to do with Michael Jackson that's related to this. Uh, and that's really where the fun began for me, and I was like, holy cow, I've got to make a video around this. Uh, First of all, there's the obvious stuff that we knew before we even heard uh, the song Do What You Want, uh, which is tied to the cover of the Art Pop album, which really obvious stuff here. Lady Gaga commissioned a sculpture of herself by, you know, famed artist Jeff Koontz. The only other pop artist that Jeff Koontz has ever sculpted is Michael Jackson, um, which uh, we'll look at right here one of Jeff Koons' most famous pieces. So obviously there's a Michael Jackson tie uh, right there to the album cover. But to me what's a little more interesting about this is the fact that Lady Gaga is appearing as a sculpture on her album cover. And to tie it into the song Scream, which she is channeling in Do What You Want, um, the song Scream appeared on Michael Jackson's history album. And guess what? The cover of that CD has Michael Jackson depicting himself as a statue. So, um, so I think that's a, a further example of, of how, these, uh, how she's channeling Michael Jackson in this song. Um, I took a look around the web to see if this theory was uh, appearing anywhere else. I haven't seen it too many other places yet, but I, I definitely think that it won't be long before people start to catch on to this. Uh, I see a lot of comments, though, of people talking about how the song reminds them of Michael Jackson just in the aesthetic quality. And you can definitely hear that in Lady Gaga's vocal performance. Uh, she's definitely channeling some Michael, channeling some Michael Jackson-style vocal uh, mannerisms in her, her delivery. Uh, 
also the obvious connection, which is that Lady Gaga has, has never really done outright 80s R&B sound before, which is what Michael is the king of. Uh, so right there in the, you know, this the simple genre that she's performing is right within Michael Jackson's uh, kingdom. Um, a few other things that tie into Michael Jackson. R. Kelly. Um, for the savvy Michael Jackson fans, you know that Michael Jackson and R. Kelly collaborated a number of times. Um, most notably, on Michael Jackson's number one single, You Are Not Alone. Which, guess what? You know what the follow-up to Scream was? You're not alone. So um, R. Kelly being on, on Lady Gaga's Scream uh, is no accident. Um, also important to point out that uh, Michael Jackson's Scream was a duet with his sister Jana Jackson, who's also been, like Lady Gaga and R. Kelly, heavily scrutinized by the media, by haters. And um, so just like Michael and Jana did Scream, Lady Gaga and R. Kelly are now doing Do What You Want. Uh, I also don't think that the selection of R. Kelly is any accident. I mean, R. Kelly has been chewed up and spit out by the pop cultural machine, especially in the United States. R. Kelly has become a punchline to people based on his personal life. And, uh, you know, fair or not, depending on your take on the situation, uh, that's overshadowed the immense, immense talent that, that R. Kelly is. So. Uh, he's a perfect choice to do well with Lady Gaga on this song because the subject matter of what she's singing about speaks directly to, uh, to what he has experienced in his life as well. So um, I think the last bit, probably the most poignant piece that ties into Michael Jackson is the bridge of the song itself. Uh, the whole song Lady Gaga is singing, um, and part of why I love the song is it's a, it's a big F you to the haters that's disguised as a sexual come on. So, um, so right from the beginning, you know, the haters are going to think that this is a sexual song and, and uh, while it's definitely designed to maybe look that way, that's not at all what's going on in the lyrics whatsoever. But uh, the, the final tie to MJ, I think, comes in the bridge and um, the whole song Lady Gaga is, you know, putting that middle finger up to, to the detractors, but in the bridge, she kind of lets you into her more vulnerable insecurities about the subject and she sings that, you know, Sometimes I'm scared, I suppose, if you ever let me go, I would fall apart if you break my heart. So just take my body and don't stop the party. And with those lyrics, I think she's kind of admitting that even though throughout the song she's challenging, you know, her detractors to say, I don't need you, and you know, my message and my spirit are going to live on in spite of, you know, what you may say about me or, you know, how you may challenge my, my presence here. Um, but she does acknowledge that there's a certain level of addiction uh, to the fame, uh, which is a theme that's been, you know, throughout her career. Uh, but she really puts it right out there. And I think in the context of Michael Jackson, that's even more salient. Because uh, when you look at uh, the death of Michael Jackson, uh, he really died in an effort to chase that addiction. I mean, uh, obviously the addiction to the drugs, but more so, he was, he was forcing himself to sleep just so he could perform and... Uh, and not stop the party and, and in spite of all the hate that he'd experienced let people continue to take his body you know and he completely sacrificed himself for for the art you know for better or worse um so that's pretty much it i i just i was uh i'm so inspired by this work by lady gaga i think she's doing some really incredible stuff i'm a huge fan of popular music and i really think there's nobody in the world who does it better than lady gaga and i think that the connections she's drawing here with michael jackson and in some obvious ways and some not obvious ways are really really brilliant work so uh kudos hope you enjoy the video